Nearly every content site needs search, but you don't have to set up a custom server or connect to some service that will then take in all of your site data and very slowly return results to you. You can actually do this directly on the client using a bunch of cool libraries. And in this case, we're going to use something called Fuse.js that will even fuzzy search. So if I mistype JavaScript, it will still give me JavaScript back and it will actually rank this depending on how many matches it finds in the actual data that it's searching against. Now, I'm going to show you how to get started with Vanilla.js, but you could also do this in React. You could do this on the server if you want to as well. You can set this up as an API endpoint. You could do this all client side. It's super flexible, super lightweight, and allows you to extend it in a bunch of really cool ways. All right, let's jump right in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. All right, let's go ahead and build this project out from scratch so that you can kind of get a sense of how I'm going to build this out. Obviously, your specific build tool will be probably different depending on what kind of framework you're using or, or whatever, but I figure we'll just keep it as simple as possible using Vanilla.js. And I will use a bundler called Vite just so we can install this as a dependency and get everything up and running. Okay, so enough talking. Let's go ahead and use PMPM and I will call it Fuse.js. Uh, how about that? Okay, so with that said, it should create this using Vite. I'll use vanilla JavaScript, that should work. Let's cd into the fuse JS, and then I'll pmpm install it. And let me open this up in my code editor, and then we'll run it from there. All right, so I've got VS Code open over here. Let me just come over here and do pmpm run dev, which should run that dev script. Of course, if you're using npm, you just do npm run dev or yarn, same kind of thing. Okay, so here we go. We've got this basic Vite app up and running. So over this way, uh, let's just talk through kind of a couple things here. You can see that we've got this index page. This is the way that Vite sets up these vanilla JavaScript projects by default. And then it's importing everything through the script and dumping it inside this app ID. So if I come over here to the script, you can see how we're importing the CSS from here and all this other kind of stuff. And then this is just getting dumped into the dump. So we're actually going to basically get rid of all this. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I'll come over here and let's rename this something more like, I don't know, we'll call it search.js. And then I'm going to just come over here and erase all this as well and we'll replace it with an Emmet kind of default. And we'll call this uh, Fuse.js. Okay, so with that said, we do need to make sure we pull in our app. So let's do that. So I'll do script and src and this we called search.js. Now we want to make sure that this is a type of module. This will allow us to import it. It will also load it after the body. Uh, so we can actually import things inside of this module and then it will load it after the body is done. So just to make sure things are working properly, I'll come in here and say like search. All right, and there we go. Okay, so everything should be hot reloading and working for us. I guess we also don't need this and we probably don't need the JavaScript and uh, I don't know. We don't have to get rid of everything. We'll come back uh, around to anything else. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and build out the basics of the HTML, and then we'll spend most of our time exploring Fuse.js. Now, I will start by putting everything inside of a main tag. And inside here, we're essentially going to have two things. We'll have the form section, and then we'll also have like the results section. So inside the form here, let's just have a form tag with an ID of search form. This is just Emmet. It's built into VS Code by default. So I'm going to get rid of that, and search form should work fine there. Okay, so inside here, we're going to have an input, and this will be type of uh, search. And that, that will give us a couple of cool things. If I come in here and start typing, you'll notice I get this X, and I can click this and X out of it. I can also just hit the escape key, and this is all just default HTML stuff. Okay, so with that said, we do want to give this a name. We'll just call it uh, search, and then I'll give this an ID as well. We'll call this uh, search as well. And then I might as well just autofocus it because we know we're going to want it to always autofocus when we refresh, refresh the page so people can just start searching right away. That'll make it a little bit easier on kind of the UX, UI side of stuff. Okay, next I'm going to add a button down here. And by default, anything inside of a form will have a type of submit, but I might as well just add that just so it's explicit here. That means if I click this button, it will submit the form. And we're gonna give this thing a class, a button for later. Uh, you don't have to do this, but uh, just because I like stuff to be styled, I will go ahead and style at the very end of the video if you're interested in that. All right, and then I will give it an ARIA label of search because it's not going to have text. It'll just have an icon inside of it. So the icon right here is going to be from Phosphor Icons. And if I come over here and I search for search, I should get, let's see, magnifying glass right here. Let's do, maybe let's just do bold. Okay, so I'm going to grab this right here and copy the SVG and I'll drop it right inside of this button. And then I want to make one change, which is to change this fill color to current uh, color. All right, so that way it will adapt based on the, the kind of the styling we give our, our HTML. Okay, so we've got the button. It's just got this inside of it, but with the ARIA label here, people know what this is for, even if they're using assistive technology. 
Uh, so we should be set there. The other section is going to be very brief. That's just going to be a section with the ID of search results like that. And then I actually will add an ARIA label here as well. This sets it off as a region. So we'll say uh, search results. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do when it comes to the HTML. Everything else will be done in the JavaScript. So let's come over here and just to make sure that this is all working, let's do um, const uh, form uh, submit, or let's just do form equals document dot query selector. And we're gonna select the form with the ID of search form. Now let me select this and let's console log this and just see if it's showing up down here. All right, here we go. So we are actually getting it. So we know everything is working properly. Now let's think through what we want to do and then we'll do it. All right, so we obviously wanna get around to using Fuse in a second, which we will do. But right now what we first need to do is basically handle the submit on the form. If I were to come in here and type something and hit enter, you'll notice that it submits it to the same page by default and URL encodes whatever that text string was. So we actually wanna prevent that as the default and instead update our page our own way. So I'm gonna get rid of this, go back. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is write an event listener on the form. So form.addEventListener, and this will be for the event of submit. And then all I want to do is take the event, and we'll just do this all inline here, but we want to e.prevent default. All right, now, so if I do this again, hit enter, nothing should happen because we've prevented the default. All right, now, what we want to do is get anything that's in that submit form. Now, right now, obviously, we only have that one uh, input of, what do we call it, search. Um, I gave this thing a name, though, because we're going to use a... JavaScript API that comes default in the browser, and that will allow us to grab anything, any form data that's within this form. So let's capture this in a constant here, form data, and we'll say new form, oops, form data, and we'll pass it the search form itself. Now I can pass a form like this or e.currentTarget, either way, let's just keep it to form. So it's gonna pass it this, and this new form data will look inside the form itself and grab anything that is a form type of data. Now just to see what this looks like, if I console like this, and we come over here and start typing, you'll now see I get this form data object that has a bunch of different things on it, including anything that has a name that is an input, in this case, the name of search. So the reason we're not seeing that yet is because it's kind of a little funky how you have to grab this from the form data. So we're gonna grab this off of this, we'll call it query, and we'll say form data dot get, and then we'll get the search. So we're actually going to name that exact thing, we'll get just the query. Now you can't actually extract this and get everything in an object, but if I come in here and start typing and hit enter, now you see we're getting the actual value of that form data input. Now like I said, you can't actually get this from as an object, so I can say object dot from from entries like this, and then I can just pass it here uh, spreading in the form data like this. And now if I come over here and I start typing, you'll see that I get a, a object back with the key of search and the value of whatever that happens to be. Now in this case, I know what I want, so let's just back this up, and there we go. We got our actual search query. Now, once I have this, I want to check it against whatever I'm searching against. So in this case, we're going to actually add a file here in public directory. We'll just call this something like posts.json. And inside here, I'm just going to paste in, this is just some dummy data. I think I got this from AI. I just asked it to spit out a bunch of stuff for me. So here we go. We've got a bunch of different objects that have titles, descriptions, dates, tags, and hrefs. So we're going to use this to basically query everything as we kind of loop through all this data. So now what I want to do is check this search term against that data. And here's where something like Fuse.js really comes in handy because I could grab an exact search term. So for instance, I could come in here and I could say something like CSS and I could check that pretty easily against all of that. But what if I had something like, let's say I was looking for form data, but I spelled it like form data, for instance. All right, well, that would never check if I was just checking string versus string. Now, Fuse.js, however, it is a fuzzy search library, which means that it can do approximate string matching. So if somebody types something kind of close to it, it can actually give you that back, even though they didn't type the exact phrase. It'll even rank it depending on how close it is to it, how close your search term is to how many times it's mentioned in each individual object. So all this is, comes by default with Fuse.js. And again, it's super small, it's lightweight, it's powerful, and it's really, really fast. So that's why I've used this. If you find something that you like, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear other options here for searching as well. Okay, so back over this way. Now what we wanna do again is we wanna check this against all that form data. So let's go ahead and get all of that using another function. So let's just call this something like post to display and I will await here we'll call this retrieve search results and I'll pass it my query 
Now, we have to obviously write this function. This is also needs to be inside of an async function, async await. And now let's grab this here and go ahead and write this up top. So we'll say function this, it will take in a query. And here, the first thing I need to do is get all of those posts. Now I could just write this as like a fetch right inside of here if I wanted to, but let's go ahead and extract this as well to its own function, just so it's kind of as clean as possible. So we'll say posts equals await, get posts like this, which also means this needs to be a sync. And then let's come up here and write that as well. So function get posts, and this will just be a simple fetch to that endpoint. Now, because I put this in the public directory, the way that Vite builds is this will be at the root of whatever the server is. So in this case, it'll just be forward slash post.json. So what I can do is come in here, let's do a try fetch just so we can do some error checking as well. So we'll say const res equals await uh, fetch. And then here we're looking at posts.json. If you're unfamiliar with how to use this fetch API, I've done some videos on it, including some that allow you to practice along with me. So I'll make sure to add those in the description if I remember correctly. Then I'm going to come in here and the first thing I want to do is check to make sure that I actually get a response from the server. And if I do, then I should be good. If I don't, then I want to throw a new error. And this will just be the res.status text, which should come along with that response I get back. All right, now if I'm going to actually catch that, I need to catch it. So let's come down here and catch our errors. And here I will just console.log the error to start with and also return the error.message. Uh, Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's come in here and I want now the data. So assuming that everything worked properly, now I'm gonna come in here and grab the data and I want to await, await res.json. All right, so this will take the body and convert it to JSON for me. And this also needs to be in a sync function if I'm going to be awaiting inside of here. All right, and down here, this needs an equal sign. Okay, there we go. Now, if I've done all this correctly, I should be able to come down here and just await these posts. And whenever I type and hit submit the form, I should now get posts back. Now I'm not getting anything back. So let's see, I need to return the data. Return data like that. Okay, so let's try again. There we go. So now I'm getting all 41 posts back with their titles and everything else. So I've got those. Now I can check those against the actual query that I passed in. Now, this is where I want to start using Fuse.js because now we need to actually use this library to check against that with their fuzzy searching. So I'll come over here to installation and let's open up the terminal here locally. I'll do pmpm install and you can do save like they're doing here. You can do a capital D. You can do save dev if you want to. All those are the same thing. And I'll say fuse.js. So that should install it as a dev dependency. And if I want to check, I can look at my package.json. And there we go, fuse.js. And you can see the exact version numbers in case you're struggling. It may be a version numbering thing if they've updated some stuff since I've done this video. So pmpm run dev, we'll get this back up and running. Now that I've got this started, let's actually just use it real simply. So if I come down here, let's see. So let's look at this search object array because now what it's going to do is show me, hey, you've got an array of objects, which is exactly what I have. How do you actually use this in real life? So you can see what I can do is instantiate a new fuse class and then pass it whatever the array is. And then I've got a bunch of different options I can pass it afterwards. There's also a bunch of other things and it gets very, very detailed very quickly, but we're gonna keep it fairly simple. And then I'll just point out a few additional options you can use. So now that I've got that installed, I need to actually pull it in up here. So let's just do that up top here. I'm gonna import fuse from fuse.js. Now, again, the reason we made this thing a module is so that we can import inside of it and so you need to make sure that your file is a module file like we did. Let's now come over here and we'll say fuse equals new fuse. And remember, we're going to pass it, first of all, our list of items. That's what we're going to get back here in this data, which we call posts. So we'll say posts, and then we can pass it an options object if we want to. For now, let's not do that. So I'll just pass it back new fuse and posts, and it's going to basically take our query and check it against those posts. So now that I've instantiated that, let's go ahead and run that check. So I'll say const results, and you can call this whatever you want, but maybe we'll call it search results just to keep it real clear. This will be equal to fuse.search, which is a method that lives on that, and you just have to pass it a pattern or a string. So in this case, we'll say query, and then we'll return this. So I'll come over here and return search results. And of course, we could compress this a little bit more, but just to hopefully make that clear, that's what we're gonna do. So now we've gotten this all back in something called post to display. Now, actually, let's just go ahead and console log the posts to display like this. And let's talk through this one more time. So if I type like CSS or something like that, I should get back something and you can see I'm getting back not a whole lot. All right, so let's see what we did wrong because I know there are some posts that use that phrase CSS. So let's first of all, come over here and just make sure we're actually getting our posts back. 
So let's do something again here. Okay, so we are getting our posts, so that's good. Let's clear this out. Uh, next, I wanna make sure that I'm getting some search results here, which I shouldn't be if I'm not getting them later. Okay, so I'm not. So let's actually figure out this right here. Maybe we add some of our options to this right now, and that will at least give, give us a starting point. The one thing I know we probably need to add is give it some keys. So if I jump back over here, um, I, this might actually be the only fix we need. Uh, let's see. If I come in here to JS, you can see that I can give it some keys, and this basically tells it, hey, when I look inside the objects that are inside of your array, which key should I be examining? So you can actually limit it so that you don't have to examine every single key that's passed in. So I think that might fix it. So if I come in here and say keys, then I can simply type, let's look at some of those keys. So we'll look at uh, post.json, like title, description, date. So let's do title, description, and tags. How about that? So I'll say title, and then I'll do description, and tags. Okay, so with that said, I think that will fix our problem. Let's see. CSS, there we go. All right, so now I'm getting a bunch back here. 25 that evidently matched CSS. If I did like find something, I get 26. Okay, uh, how about JavaScript? Just to make sure I'm getting something different. Okay, so I get 10 that time. So I am actually getting different things depending on basically which query I type in. Now what I want to do is look at each of these and see what I get back. So maybe let's just take this most recent one. You can see that I'm getting an item back. So each of the objects in this array that I get returned to me have an item and then a ref index as well. This item includes everything that was inside of the object that it examined. So I get the date, the description, the href, the tags, and the title. So I get all that back, and uh, so that way I can actually display it however I want in the DOM. So that means over here what I can do is take my posts to display right here, and I can pass this each one of those items by using the map method to a function I write that basically generates HTML. So we'll call this something like generate uh, post HTML. And this will pass each item to it and then return all this to me in array. So if I get it back in an array in a second here, uh, let's just capture it in something like uh, HTML posts. We'll probably just do this directly in the HTML in a second, but for now, just to keep it a little cleaner, let's write that function generate post HTML. It will take in whatever item it is. Let's call this a post since I guess that's kind of what it is. And then what I want to do here is return an HTML template string. So in here we'll have an article like this and we'll close this off. And now I just want to return some HTML. So I know I want the title in here so we'll have this as an H2 and then I want it to be linkable. So we'll have an an anchor link here with an href and eventually we'll point this somewhere but for now we'll just leave that alone. You may have noticed that I did add this in backticks that will allow me to interpolate values directly in here which is what I want to do. So inside here if I were to look over this way you can see I've got a post dot item would be the next thing dot title. So let's go ahead and do that post dot item dot title. Okay and then over here it would be post dot item dot href right. So actually inside those strings there, right? Like this, uh, post.item.href. All right, next I also have a description, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'll say description, and this will be post.item.description. Item and we'll close that paragraph off. And then finally, I'll have a button, and this I'm going to give a class of btn so that we can style a little bit later. I'll take this href, and once again, we'll do the same kind of thing. So inside here, we'll have post.item.href. And then I'll just have each of them say like a read post. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. Now we know that whenever we type in something, we should get this back. We've captured it in this value right here. So I'm going to go ahead and console log that. We'll again type CSS. And now we're getting a string of all these items. But notice it's inside of an array, and so they're comma separated. So the easiest way to get that out of there is to come over here and say dot join. We'll join it on nothing. So let's type one more time, CSS. And now I get an actual string of HTML. Now it's not yet HTML, but what I'm going to do is replace any of the HTML inside of my index.json, let's see, right over here, this search results, we will add it directly inside of here. So let's go ahead and do that, and that will be our final step before we do some kind of quality of life improvements. So I'm going to get rid of this, I'm not going to capture this, I'm just going to directly put it inside of my search results. So the way I can do that is come up here, copy this down, and we'll say uh, search results. And this will be inside of our search results ID. Now this ID just corresponds with the ID right over here. And now I can drop it directly in there. So let's grab this here. And this will now be equal to search results.innerHTML. And that will point to this string of HTML. 
So now if we did this correctly, I can type CSS, hit enter, and it all populates just like that. Now these don't obviously point anywhere, so if I click, it's just gonna uh, mess itself up, but you can see how now we've actually got this real live and searching everything. So if I come over here and search for developers, I could see developers, and let's say I add two S's, no problem. It should still find things that are connected to that. All right, so that's the very basics of using Fuse.js. You can see that it's pretty easy to get started with. You can see that you're gonna use this class, Fuse, and then you're going to pass it whatever your array of posts are. In this case, that's how I'm setting it up. And you can see there are a bunch of different examples, but this search string array or search object array is what we're looking at right now. But there are some other examples as well. And then you can pass it keys so it knows which things in those objects to look at but there are a lot of other options. So let's next look at some other options we have available to us. The nice thing is VS Code is going to give us a lot of these in the IntelliSense because all of this is typed. So if I come in here and I hit uh, Control and Spacebar, you can see that I've got all these different, uh, different properties that I can pass it. So for instance, one of the ones that I really like to do is come over to Include Score and do True. Now if I do that, oops, like this, come back over this way and let's just go ahead Let's see, I want to console like this right here. So let's do that, CSS, here we go. So I've got 25 entries that match this. Now in addition to the item and the ref index, which we already saw, I now get a score as well. Now these scores correspond to how close they match to the actual query itself. If I come back over here, I can look at all these options under options for API reference. So include score says that basically a score of zero means it's a perfect match. A score of one indicates a complete mismatch. So the closer it is to zero, that helps. Now you might want to sort those as well. And there actually is a sort uh, property as well. So sort something, let's see, sort. Should sort, there we go. All right, we'll set this to true and how it will sort it basically from closest match to the things that don't match. Now I can also include the matches themselves and you can see that right over here. By default that is set to false, but I can set it to true. And now if I run this one more time, let's look at JavaScript like this. Now I get back all of these and under each of these, I also get an array of matches. I also get that score that we already looked at, but these matches will actually tell me where it found a connection. So here it looks like it found three connections. One was under the title. If I come over here, one was under the description and one was under the tag. So that's all three have matched, which is probably why this sorted this at the very top because it's the closest to the query that I typed in. If I come back over here, there's a bunch of other options. I won't show you each of these, but you can see that by default, if it has even a single character that matches, it technically counts as a match. I like to put this to like two or three, so maybe I will do this one. So we'll min match character length, we'll do something like three. Should sort, I already did that. Find all matches, that's set to false by default. The keys, we already did that. Now there's a couple other mat matching options for this fuzzy search. Threshold basically says how closely, you know, should you try to match it before you give up, the algorithm gives up here on the or trying to find a perfect match. So in this case, I'm gonna set this threshold. I like to do it to something like 0.3 if I'm getting back a lot of results. Remember with the CSS, I was getting 25. Let's see, now I'm getting 13. So you can see that's the difference. If I came in here and did something like eight, it will match even more. So anything that's even slightly close to it, at least I think it will. Let's get rid of this and see what happens. All right, so CSS right here. Okay, so 13, maybe that did not make a difference. I thought CSS was the one we were getting a bunch of those at. Maybe it's this min character match was throwing us off. So let's come back to our threshold, do 0.3, and we'll go CSS, we get 13. Let's see, we go 0.8, any different? All right, 41. So there we go. This min-match min character length was the thing that was limiting it. But you can see how this threshold also is another way to limit it. So a lot of this depends on how much things you're searching against and how valuable the results are that you're getting back. So you can play around with all of these. Distance as well shows basically how close your match is to a specific location in the queries that you're, you're matching. You can ignore the location. So there's a bunch of really cool things in here, including functions that you can use, sorting functions you can use. So you can see how it's very extensible, but by default, it's super easy to use, super easy to get started with. If you're interested more in kind of how they score things, the scoring theory is really interesting. I'm not sure I'm smart enough to understand exactly what's going on here, but I found it interesting at least. All right, now lastly, just because I can't help myself, if I come over here, um, let's go ahead and do a couple other real quick things. So let's come over here and first of all, add a placeholder and this will just say like, enter a search term. I think that's a nice place to start. And then let's come back over to the JavaScript and it may be that sometime when you type in something, nothing comes back. Well, I think you should show that somewhere for the user just so they see what's going on. So let's get rid of this right here. 
And then what I want to do is check on the post display right here. And I want to say post display dot length. If this is greater than zero, then go ahead and do post display. Otherwise, what I want to do, if I can do this here, is show no results uh, found. So if I save this, it will actually, my prettier will kind of make this a little easier to read. I'm doing a check right here. And this is a little ternary here that says, if it's more than zero, go ahead and show all this. If it's less than zero, do no results have found. So if I type something that doesn't exist, no results found. However, if I type CSS or something like that, it will actually give me a list of results. So that's at least a couple of quality of life improvements. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and style this just for kicks. So I know that I'm not going to show you how to do this in this video just because it's getting a little long here. But I'm going to add a style sheet here, styles CSS. And then I'm going to go ahead and replace all of this with my own styling. All right, there we go. So now I can come in here and say CSS and I get way better styling just because I can't help myself. All right, now if you're interested in how I did a lot of this, these buttons I've done a video before on, I've done a video before on how I do these inputs. All of this I've pretty much done videos on before and I'll try to remember to add links in the description, but not too complicated. I'll let you kind of look through this yourself. And of course, a link will be in the description if you want to check it out. Well, I hope this was a help for you. I plan to do a follow-up video where I apply Fuse.js to an Astro site, but I wanted to do a more generic one to start with in case you have a different setup. Well, thanks so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.